Hello, and welcome to Credit Matters TV, the show highlighting Standard & Poor's analysis and global perspective on the latest credit market developments. I'm Peter Murphy, Managing Director in Standard & Poor's Public Finance Infrastructure Group. David Bodek joins me today to speak about Superstorm Sandy's ongoing impact on the credit quality of the Long Island Power Authority, which we rate A- with a negative outlook. During the storm, nearly 1.2 million of the utility's customers lost power, many for upwards of two weeks. The utility service area suffered extensive damage, and storm repair costs are expected to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. David, welcome. Thank you, Pete. So David, what are the key credit considerations affecting LIPA in the wake of the storm? It may come as a surprise to some, but the costs of repairing the storm's damage are not the key uh, credit considerations for us. Rather, it's the political fallout from the storm. The utility already has very high rates. Customers were out for a very lengthy period of time, and we see that as having the potential to undermine or limit the financial flexibility available to the utility. And why is that? In terms of the storm damage, the utility expects that it qualifies to receive FEMA reimbursements for about 90 percent of its storm recovery costs. It also is pursuing avenues for re receiving reimbursements from the state for the gap between the 90 percent and 100 percent of the storm costs also of importance is that the utility has access to liquidity facilities to help bridge the period of time between the, its outlays of money and receipt of reimbursements. So from that perspective, we're comfortable that the utility is reasonably well situated to respond to the storm. However, our concern relates to the fact that there has been political backlash because the utility's rates are high and because customers were out for so long and that has led to a lot of um, ill will or ill feelings towards the utility. How does the debt burden affect their rates? Well, the debt burden is part of the rate equation. LIPA has about $7 billion of balance sheet debt, and on top of that it has $2.7 billion of fixed lease commitments. Those are important drivers in the utilities rates, and that over the years has been of concern to government officials and to ratepayers who've looked at LIPA's rates. So against that backdrop, when you look at the high rates and you look at the damage for the storm, the long outages, it has led important government officials, including New York's governor, local legislators, state legislators, and even federal legislators to call for a rate, a rate freeze for at least some period of time. And to the extent that rates are frozen, we see that as suspending the utility's financial flexibility to respond to changing circumstances and rising costs, and that's an important credit quality consideration. David, Governor Cuomo has proposed legislation that would securitize some of LIPA's debt. What would securitization mean for the non-securitized remaining debt? It's our expectation that LIPA will only be able to securitize a portion of its debt based upon the bonds that can be called. So a portion will not be securitized, and that portion will continue to be rated based upon LIPA's unenhanced credit quality. The securitized bonds will be off-balance sheet obligations. However, they still have implications for credit quality because based upon other securitizations by electric utilities, we would envision that the debt service on the securitized bonds will appear on the same bill as debt service on the balance sheet debt as well as all the other costs that LIPA has and customers' perceptions and governmental officials' perceptions of high rates might not abate and that too could contribute to constraints on financial flexibility which could hurt or limit the utility's ability to respond to changing circumstances and their ability to protect lenders. Okay, so we mentioned the outlook is negative. Are there any milestones we're looking to to evaluate the credit? We're monitoring the governor's proposed legislation to see how that advances and in particular we want to see whether it will include a rate freeze, and if there is a rate freeze, the period of time for which rates are frozen. 
Okay. Are there lessons here for other public power utilities? Yes, there are lessons for other public power utilities. We can learn from WIPA's situation that ratings for public power utilities are about not just quantitative metrics, but also about qualitative elements. We see from WIPA's situation that customer perceptions as to the burdensome level of rates and the customer service can affect credit quality, it can affect financial flexibility. Similarly, ratings can be affected by uh, the um, legislators and other political officials' support for the utility and its revenue stream. The drivers here relate to the qualitative factors associated with the rating more so than the quantitative factors. Okay, well, thanks for sharing your insights on this topic. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today. We encourage you to log on to Standard & Poor's Global Credit Portal to learn more about S&P's views on infrastructure credits.